Hoosiers know what is right. We know that the egregious behavior exhibited by Curtis Hill is wholly unacceptable. That is one of the women who says Indiana Attorney General Curtis Hill sexually harassed her. Now, despite their claims, a special prosecutor looking into the allegations says he is not filing criminal charges in the case, and Indiana Governor Eric Holcomb says he's not happy about it. He just issued a statement saying he believes the women who stepped forward, and he went on to say the findings show a disregard of the executive branch zero-tolerance harassment policy. My position has not changed. The women say that the attorney general groped them during a private party in a downtown bar. And multiple witnesses backed up their accounts as outlined in a separate inspector general's report. Men and women from both political parties gave accounts of what happened that night, calling Hill's conduct, quote, inappropriate, creepy, unwelcome, and that it made many of the women at the party uncomfortable. The inspector general also says that Hill's state of intoxication, no doubt, contributed to his actions, with Hill admitting to drinking and witnesses stating he was drunk. Although there will be no criminal charges, the victims say they are encouraged by what the prosecutor on the case did find. Rich Van White begins our coverage now at the Indiana State House. Rich? Well, John, that special prosecutor found a party full of witnesses that had different recollections of what occurred that night in early morning. He found a video security system that had been recorded over. He found inappropriate, disturbing behavior. What he didn't find, though, was evidence of a crime. I, I didn't find a criminal case against Curtis Hill to charge and prosecute. The special prosecutor did find lawmakers and staffers celebrating the end of the legislative session in this downtown bar drinking significantly into the early morning hours. During the party, Representative Mara Candelaria Reardon and three other state employees say Hill groped them and sexually harassed them. I took their statements from the perspective that I believe them. I did find them to be credible. Hill's behavior, though possibly inappropriate, Sigler said did not rise to the level of sexual battery or battery. Gabby McLemore was among the first alleged victims to step forward. We put ourselves out there, we put our, our jobs and our reputations on the line, and um, just to be told that, you know, you're believed, but there's nothing we can do. The women aren't giving up. They intend to sue the state of Indiana, the Attorney General's office, and Curtis Hill himself, alleging sexual harassment, assault, and employment retaliation. They are encouraged by the special prosecutor's findings. What he said does support our claims. They said that they believe that we're credible. This is unacceptable behavior. And uh, whether it rises to the level of, level of criminal or not, that's not the issue here. Hill was out of the office. His personal attorney issued a statement saying in part, we never doubted that Mr. Hill would be cleared of any alleged crimes. Curtis Hill has not been in his office all day, we have been told by a spokesperson. That civil lawsuit, well, it requires less evidence to win a civil suit than it does a criminal case. That's going to be a factor. Also, tonight at 6 o'clock, we're going to hear from someone we haven't heard from before. One of the alleged victims in this case is speaking out for the very first time. Reporting live from the State House, Rich Van Wyk, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. All right, thank you, Rich.